Olecranon fractures. Olecranon fracture can occur from a direct blow to the elbow or from a fall in the outstretched hand. There are several classification systems. The classification I use is the Colton classification. Non displaced fracture. The fracture is non displaced and stable. The fracture has less than 2 mm of separation. That separation will not increase with elbow flexion. The extensor mechanism is intact and the patient will be able to extend the elbow against gravity. In the second group, the fracture is displaced. There is a type which is an avulsion fracture. There's another type, oblique or transverse fracture, another type that's comminuted fracture, another type that's fracture dislocation. The electron fracture dislocation can be several types. It can be anterior, trans olecranon fracture dislocations, or it can be posterior, like posterior montagia fracture dislocation. Examination of the patient will show the patient is unable to extend the elbow. A true lateral view is the x-ray that will show the fracture clearly. Usually, this fracture is followed by a stiffness of the elbow in about 50% of the patient. But it really does not affect the function of the patient. So when you talk about treatment for olecranon fracture, the goal of treatment should be restoration of the articular surface, preservation of the continuity of the extensor mechanism, should be maintaining an elbow stability, and it would be nice to avoid the stiffness of the elbow. So non-operative treatment is used for non-displaced fracture, and it could be used for some displaced fracture in an elderly patient. You treat the elbow in some flexion with a splint. I will personally use minimally invasive technique in this patient unless the skin is very bad or the fracture is very comminuted. How about surgery? Well, you want to know about three techniques. The tension band technique, whatever you use, K-wires, or big screw. The second one will excise the olecranon and reattach the triceps. The third one is a plate and the screw fixation. So let's select the best technique. The tension band technique will be used only for transverse fracture with no comminution. As I said, you can use 6.5 screw or you can use K wires for the tension band. So when you do the tension band, you want to engage the anterior cortex of the ulna, but you want to avoid over penetration because you want to avoid affecting the forearm rotation or injuring the anterior interosseous nerve. Make sure at the end of the operation you can do pronation and spination. Otherwise, pull them out a little bit. This tension band mechanism takes the distractive force of the triceps and converts it to compression force at the articular surface, especially when the patient bends the elbow. There are some few technical points for this operation. One of them is the drill for the wire should be about 4 or 5 cm from the fracture, enough safety so the fracture will not propagate. The second one, put the wire through the drilled holes before you use K wires. The third one, make sure the hook of the K wire is posteriorly and make sure the wire itself is very close to the bone so the fixation will not be lax 
and unstable. And this is a diagram for this technique. Now, if you're going to use a 6.5 screw, it's probably better to use a washer so you can capture the wire. Intermediary 6.5 screw is a reasonable option, but you will need to supplement it with the tension band wire. Never use the cancellous screw alone by itself. The tension band technique is for transverse fracture, and if you find the comminution interoperatively or during your technique, then please change the plan. The second technique is excision of the fragment and triceps advancement. We use it if the fracture is less than 50% of the joint. We use it in elderly patients, especially if uh, the fracture is comminuted, and it can be used for some non-unions when the fracture is small and it can be fixed. Make sure this procedure is done when the elbow is stable. If the elbow has ligamentous instability and you excise the piece of the olecranon, then you're going to make the elbow very unstable. And when you attach the triceps, you're going to attach it closer to the articular surface. How about the plate fixation? The bridge plate and the screw fixation. We'll use it for everything else, such as comminuted fracture, Montagia fracture, oblique fracture extend to the coronoid, fracture dislocation, you will use a dorsal plate. You're going to put the plate on the tension side, which is the dorsal aspect of the recronin. Sometimes you make an opening in the triceps and put the plate against the bone and then suture the triceps on top of the plate, so that will avoid the hardware prominence. So I want to review again which method of fixation you will use. So if the patient is elderly and a small fragment, comminuted, less than 50%, excise it, and then they attach the triceps tendon to the olecranon. If the fracture is transverse and proximal to the base of the coronoid, the intention band technique is good. Use it. But if it is not straightforward and different than the two scenarios I outlined to you, then use the plate. Comminuted. Plate. Oblique. Plate. Unstable. Plate. Dislocations. Plate. Distal to the coronoid. Plate. The typical scenario in the exam will be a common muted fracture and you want you to put a plate. You probably may need to remove about 20% of the plate because of the hardware irritation. But the tension band is worse. You may need to remove more than 50% of them because of hardware irritation. I hope I helped you to understand it. Thank you very much. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.